everybody, and welcome back to the Triforce Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for, for joining us on this adventure. Yes. We're all together. Thanks uh, very much. Oh, Sips. Yeah. P Flax. Yeah. You guys are also here. Uh, P Flax noticed um, at the end of last Triforce Podcast that uh, it's been exactly two years since we started yeah. recording when this. We went to, uh, when, yeah. When I went to save the, uh, the file. At the end of the recording session, I noticed that it was the same date, March the yeah, what would it have been seventh. seventh, and it was that two two thousand and seventeen. That was when we. That's first right. Started. So we're two. We are two years old. We're two that years mean? old. Yeah, it means that we're still developing at a frightening rate. Um, got a lot of development <laughs> to go through still. Um, we'll probably we're probably not sleeping as well as we could be. Probably still drinking a lot of milk as well to. Um, <laughs> to sustain ourselves and um yeah probably from our mother's seat still, still shitting our pants on I will on say the this normally when you look at a young child you think it's going to grow up into something better yeah uh, I, with us i don't think that wish is going to be granted i think what what you see now is what you're going to get until, well, until we, yeah. we are forced to quit by some kind Born of lawsuit. suit 40 year old yeah. old man there's yeah. a lot of hope <laughs> there's a lot of hope but <laughs> Sometimes that it doesn't pay off. It doesn't turn into what you expect it to. You know, expectation is everything, right? Do not yes. trust to hope. It is forsake in these lands. Oh Lord. Lord of the Rings. Sorry, I watched it. Whoa. The other day. I, it's a great quote. That's I didn't a, realize that was where it was from. Geez, that is, <laughs> and I watched it like a month. I watched it over Christmas. Oh, my God. So anyway, how are you guys doing? Anything happened this week that's, that's worth commenting on just mundanities of your real life um, what have you done well, well god i've been i've been listening to a lot of beatles albums like because i do because i've been listening to all these old albums but the album so, club yep the album club so like we so we're we've listened to some neil young which is really good and uh we're now listening to talking heads but what i've been doing in between is like i've been i've been you know following the the album club and i've been doing my my bit you know i have to listen to these albums but the, i find myself wanting more so i've i've kind of like gone off the grid a little bit and i've been doing my own personal album club where i've been listening to and so far that's been mostly beatles albums which i never appreciated in the past and uh, actually it's an uh, interesting story i actually for for like the first time in a long time i've I, i've had something to talk to my mom about other than like my kids okay and um and like vacation plans and stuff like that mm. um because she's a she's a beatles fan and she's always been one she was like when the beatles were releasing albums she was sort of like target demographic she was a she was a young teenage girl at the time which was largely yeah, that, their, that's, their that's fan what they base. were interested in beatlemania yeah. beatlemania yeah. that's right so she was a, an avid Beatle maniac back in the day um and i've been talking to her i've been listening to all these old albums through uh just to get a feel for the beatles and, and an appreciation for the beatles after all this time of not really appreciating them much um and i now i talk to my mom about it almost daily like oh what what song is your favorite song on this album what's your favorite album you know what was your who is your favorite beatle which which is which fifth beetle do you agree is the actual fifth beetle because there's like who's the hottest beetle like yeah lots of just lots of beetle questions and stuff and she's always happy to answer you know she's really into it so it's been the good the answer is always not ringo well you'd be um, surprised you know there's a couple of people that really rate ringo they thought he was like the best drummer in liverpool at the time <laughs> which but then famously there was a quote by paul mccartney when when asked is is Ringo the best drummer in the world? He's not even the best drummer in the Beatles. Yeah, that's right. That's the quote. Yeah, which is I always thought was really funny. Actually, really a really funny quote. He's not even yeah, the best really, drummer. Yeah, really in the nice quote from your friend. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and bandmate. Well, I mean, uh, they did break up, and they they kind of hated each other in the end. So, like, maybe that was some maybe that was like some some foreshadowing of. You know, I mean, they had a better run than two years, though, right? Ten years. They were, they were yeah, together they had, for about ten years. Teams. There was some fantastic stuff, actually. I mean, and I saw this week, uh, linking back to last week, um, that when Paul McCartney sold the, the, all the Beatles albums to Michael Jackson, follow up to, 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 to Triforce News, McCartney, like about two years ago, bought back all of those. That's uh, right. Yeah, he brought back Sony, all because Michael yeah. Jackson. They, I think, I think. Michael Jackson bought him outbid Paul McCartney for like forty-seven million or something for the entire Beatles. Catalog, yeah, well, right? I mean, I, it went up to like a billion dollars value, and that helped like Michael Jackson through all of his 
like extravagant yeah that's right because he sort of, of spunked like, all his money on neverland giraffes and stuff for uh, neverland literally and figuratively i guess and um I guess. and uh, <laughs> but yeah but yeah mccartney's I, I think mccartney is now like like worth 1.2 billion or something he's one he's like one of the if not the most richest of that is those people's albums. musician <laughs> i mean their back catalog is insane though but like, no i agree like honestly some of those albums really just really interesting stories there's a couple of really good documentaries behind yeah, them and like yeah. about like the wall of sound stuff and all of the interesting beatles stuff. i recommend if you're into like in I, even if you're not into it i think there's some really interesting i just sometimes watch random fucking documentaries on netflix same i watched one yesterday about uh cycling and doping called mm. uh Icarus and it's was like it called this guy cycling and doping needles in his ass every day so basically he 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 wants to he he comes like 14th in a, a sort of cycling event and then yeah. the premise is that he's gonna dope for a year and like try and do better there's a th there's this thing recently about psych Olympic cycling and I think it was a, a a man who who transitioned into a woman and competed in in women's cycling won the medal uh, for, mm. for women's cycling and there's like a bit of controversy around it you know like ex women's cyclists were coming out and saying that it's not fair and stuff and that you know traditionally men's and women's events or whatever are like separate or whatever and it, and and this guy is like you know nat like like naturally doping instead of like artificially doping it's like the well, equivalent I, I, I or whatever. I feel like that's the thing like what they dope with is testosterone you yeah. know he's literally doing those I mean that's seriously like I mean I think he's also doing it some, something else which is also like an organic molecule like it's not necessarily like a, a detectable anabolic steroid it's not like classic those things that made you just put on muscle like crazy but were also incredibly bad for you and like right. made your testicles shrink and all that crap but you know i think like it's, yeah. it seems like mostly if, if you're if you're born a man and it's almost like what you do is you take the testosterone you make yourself really strong and buff and then you just stop for two weeks and then you're just your body goes back to normal and then you compete and it's like you just can't be you know there's no way for you it's, it's crazy yeah Really interesting documentary, really interesting stuff. Anyway, I'm just thinking, just quickly harking back to the Beatles and oh, how yeah, your mum yeah. brought you and your mum together. <laughs> Do you think that your kids are uh, going to be like, in 20 years, they're going to be like listening to Take That albums and Spice Girls and like connecting, reconnecting with your... I don't know if it's your... the same... Th I don't know if it's the same thing though. I'm, I'm really only listening to the Beatles because... Um, again, because of this album club, they just they they just get featured so often in you know like top fifty, top one hundred best album lists. Because like Abbey Road, the White Album, and and Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band are all considered these like classic sort of essential rock albums, right? On all these so, lists. What are you saying it was just you saying it was just luck that your mum was a, a young teenager yeah, when the Beatles yeah. were around. It just and so, so she was luckily exposed to good music as opposed to yes. like today. But like take that and stuff. I don't think we're gonna look back in twenty years and 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 see take that as anything but just like a you know chart topping pop group. Like I, I don't think that they about boy zone. About five. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not to me, talk shit about all these fucking. This is this is my childhood. Sips, you're shitting on. I'm here, not man. talking shit about them. They they had a they had a massive impact on me personally, but I just don't know if they've had a massive impact on Bewitched. the music industry. You know what I mean? I I, I kind of see those bands more as like the S Club the seven. era of like manufactured bands, sort of thing. You know what I mean? And I mean, they've always. I think they've always been manufactured bands. I think it's a mistake to think that it only happened. Uh, in the 80s and 90s. We're in the fucking plastic age sips, yo. No, what, but I manufactured mean... Manufactured is best. I like went to a fucking vegan vending machine yesterday. You didn't. I fucking did. I hope it... I'm going to sabotage it to fall on anyone who puts money in that thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean like... I, I think a lot of... I think you're right. I think a lot of bands are manufactured... But I, I'm talking about the ones that are manufactured by your your Simon Cowles and stuff, like you know. But there like, were guys like that back then as well. The thing is, the the difference is the sound is different. But that's the, it. what there wasn't a huge industry for it though, and and you could argue as well that like music that came out sort of like in the '60s and '70s was probably during like the counterculture and everything was probably a lot more influential than stuff that came out in the '90s or like. 2000s depending on the genre right but pop in the 90s wasn't wasn't like groundbreaking i don't think no and, i'm i mean i i'm reluctant to to say that the pop music of the past was better be, because i think that 
we're going to see the same thing in 30 or 40 years that you're seeing now with the Beatles, which is that we cherry pick the stuff from the past and say, man, wasn't music great back then? But like I've said before, you're missing all the shit that was really popular when people oh, look shit, back and say right. the 70s the was amazing, the 80s were <laughs> the amazing, monkeys. the yeah. 60s were amazing. There was so much dreck. And the idea that it didn't sell, that we didn't have terrible music back then, just like we do now, people buy, a lot of people don't actually listen. They just put music on and they don't care. They don't really listen to it. They don't look for a connection with it. They like to have something on because otherwise there's just silence. But some people really listen to music, and that, to me, has to be good music. You can't really listen to Bewitched no. and be like, yes, <laughs> this speaks to me and will continue to speak to me I, throughout I my life. I would argue you would never even put that on as background. No, you'd have to be really fucking desperate to put on a Bewitched album, in my opinion. Maybe in 2019, I, 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 Sorry but if I've offended you out did. there, Bewitched fans, but... Bewitched fans. <laughs> I, I just, I don't think that Bewitched is... is, is 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 breaking any ground here you know what i mean like i, I think that right, so just... this is interesting when the, a long time ago i had a conversation with a bunch of people and here's the idea we're gonna fire off a bunch of music in a rocket ship into space sort of preserve some memory of the human race <laughs> that's, that's right. the only way you can possibly get rid of that's it that's it yeah <laughs> that also Wait, the worst music on earth <laughs> we're gonna fire it into the sun but we're gonna preserve some record for, you know the way when they sent uh, that probe, it might have been Voyager, I can't remember, where they yeah. put like a disc on there with the right. human voice speaking and the, our alphabet oh, yeah, numbers and stuff like it's that. It's called the Arecibo message or something, isn't sure. it? Sure. And but they designed it very carefully so that it didn't feature language, that it was pictorial, that it represented yeah. where we were, which planet was ours, just as a kind of record. I mean, in a billion years, maybe someone will find it and be like, huh, look at this. That would be amazing. But if we were to try to preserve, or let's say that there was a terrible uh, impending doom and we could fit a certain amount of music, what would we choose? And some people were saying, well, surely we, I mean, I was saying we, we should put great music on there that stood the test of time, not the likes of Britney Spears, who was popular at the time of this conversation. And they were saying, well, how do you know what's good? How, who are you to say that the music of, of today, of, of whoever the equivalent of Britney Spears is now, who cares, right? Fucking Miley Cyrus, let's say, okay? We should put the music of Miley Cyrus on this record as a testament and say, this is our record, this is the music we love. Like, if you let the public vote, yeah. it would be some stupid shit like that. And I'm saying, no, you'd have to put music that has actually stood the test of time and has proven to have led to other music coming about because of it, or it was like the start of a scene, yeah. or it had a real effect on people. But are we right to make, is it okay to make that judgment? And if so, why are we trusting music that maybe wasn't massively popular nowadays but it's considered important. How do you judge that? How do you judge? That? I'm I'm saying I know why I think it's right, but I'm interested to see what you guys think. I would probably say like I mean, I mean in, in in the case of like a lot of like these these classic albums at the time of their release, they were considered groundbreaking. They were reviewed as such, um, and and they were sort of given like the yeah this this is really important. This is like a, an essential album that you need to listen to or whatever. Um, this is going to be like groundbreaking or whatever. Right. But I think if you're going to send music up in, into a capsule to like uh, give a, another race uh, an idea of what, you know, makes the human race tick or whatever, you'd have Little to pump. You'd have to be <laughs> Little pump. fair. Like you'd have to have representation across every category. So like, yeah, there would be some anal cunt in there. Like There'd Gucci have to gang. be, right? Gucci gang's going to be in there. Gucci there gang, should Gucci be some gang, Gucci, Gucci gang, gang in there as Gucci well. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Yeah, I, I would there. even say that you'd have, you'd probably want to put Trollololol in there as well. Like, <laughs> you know, so some of these songs, they don't fit any specific genre, but they're still just as important as some of like the traditional genres, you know, like rock pop hip-hop drum would and bass, you put would you put the, the crazy frog song on there from a few years back well the axel f one the uh um, the crazy like, frog that one that one i think um, if you could like if you had to distill like a song down into a few pixels i think that one might actually work you know yeah, yeah. i think like, like if you haven't got a lot of data to be sending <laughs> on your transmission but what about jingles as well like you'd want to send like the go compare jingle up there probably and like uh washing <laughs> machine you know that let's go out to the lobby let's yeah. go you know the king cone one yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like there's a couple and, of jingles yeah, like i think maybe what is the most 
iconic human song? If there was a, a song that defined humanity, what would it be? Well, first of all, we're, we're thinking of humanity from a Western perspective. So that that's would be true. Yeah. Part like, one. There's probably oh, a shit. lot of like um, sitar like kind of music as well. Yeah. That Some guy in rural China is going to have a real different idea. Mongolian about. throat yeah. singing as well. Exactly. It's probably pretty popular. Oh my God. Do you know what the fucking song is? Go on. It's probably fucking Michael Jackson. What, what Are about you us? But, Earth song. For, well, because he's like hugely popular everywhere across the world. He's like a global phenomenon, has been for years. Like that's true. I think yeah. like if anything has united the East and West, it's like <laughs> oh Michael Jackson. Song. I think it should be that girl is mine with uh, the the duo with Paul McCartney, where they're like, no, no, Michael, she's mine. <laughs> Paul, you're fucking crazy, dude. She's mine. It's like the most awkward song. I think that was that's a good representation of the human race, especially like in 2019. I think what, they should send that that one song terrible. in a capsule. Yeah. yeah, it's not great for for modern yeah <laughs> modern world. So the humans live as the male dominated with a female slave race, yeah, and they're very predatory over females. It seems they're arguing about them. Yes, the and- mating decision is made by which man can out argue the other intriguing a debate based a debate based reproduction list of system. songs from Lil Pump <laughs> Lil Pump a Lil Pump says by Stormzy uh, this, this song is interesting it says first you have to get the bitches and you get the money to get the bitches and he also yes. implies that pimping isn't easy what is pimping and why no. is it so hard and, and why does this man seem to have so many bitches all up on his Dick and balls, <laughs> <laughs> licking, licking on my balls and sucking on my balls all the time. The combination of gin and juice appears to be important to <laughs> <in> this <race. laughs> and, and, and something, something referred to as Indo. <laughs> Fuck you, know. not, not so uh, Imagine they, they hear this, they turn up. Human beings of Earth, we have brought you much Indo, also <laughs> gin and juice combined in a cup. And don't worry, we have brought our own gin. We are not and relying and merely on your And we've also brought our own bitches <laughs> we to, have bitches to be sucking on rubbers. We have heard that you are thirsty <laughs> for bitches. As you would say, humans, sucking on our balls and <laughs> licking on our balls. <laughs> Humans. Don't worry, we yes. have brought all of our balls for you to suck on. <laughs> no longer will you go hungry or thirsty. Uh, I don't know. I like coming back to the argument about uh, music and stuff. I, it's it it's hard for me to judge because I'm older, right? And there there is definitely a thing where the 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 older you get, the more entrenched you are with music that you listen to in your teens, right? Yeah, you, the, people the tend finding, to be definitely, yeah, yeah. People so like whatever you listen to in in your in your mid going into late teens is likely what you're going to still be listening to sort of like when you're in your 40s 50s 60s or whatever on average i'm not saying everybody some right, people right. are, yep. are that, really into music yep. and they'll keep listening to new music and and going to see new bands and stuff like that but i i, I think in general the vast majority of people who aren't that into music will do this Right. So like you're, you're, you're coming up to 50, you're still listening to like, if you grew up in the nineties, you're still listening to like Nirvana and Soundgarden. Yes, I know, and I know people like Nas that and, still, and still, like that. yeah. All right. That yeah. Yeah. Stuff. So like, I, I'm, I'm not worried about that, but it, I'm annoyed that I'm like that. So I'm trying to like go back at like, but I still don't trust new music. Like, and maybe through this process, I'll get to a point where I can appreciate new music, but I just don't trust it. Like, I think there's so much and it's so easy to get music out there now with like your Spotify's and Amazon music and stuff like that, that I, I think that it, it's, it's, it's too much of a undertaking, you know, like where I can just go back in time and I can, I can seek out these, you know, alleged classic, classic albums in, in any given genre sort of thing and, and consume those instead. But I don't know if it helps me really. You I know feel what I mean? like that is the opposite of looking for yeah. new music. You are specifically looking No, for but old I'm music. still I, I am, but I'm still broadening my range of taste and stuff, right? But in like, the wrong direction is what I'm saying. It's like know, saying but, we need to go east. And you're saying, yeah, but if I go west far enough, then I'll be in the east. And technically you're tr- you're right. If you keep going west, you will end yeah. up. But it's a long road to get from to the east if you just go west. So as listening- Columbus discovered, am I right, history fan? <laughs> so it's weird because I'm listening to new music for me, 
like music that I've never listened to that I am now enjoying and never appreciated before, but it's not so new So it's new music. to you rather than new yes, music, right? Yes, yes. So it, I, I would love to send you a couple of my favorite albums from the last few years to listen to. Like I, I generally listening to a full album. Oh God, we can make it like a segment on this podcast. Yeah, I could give you a couple of albums. We don't, well, by, by the way, the first of all, album Reddit, we pour back. Yeah, re- listen to this Bewitched album. This is their, their fourth album. They've, their sound has really matured at this point. Yeah. The, I don't know if Bewitched even had four albums. I'm going to Google that right now. Um, yeah, I only remember that one song about Jesse. Whoa, Jesse, go on, go on and on. and on. That's the only Bewitched song I think I know. I oh my God! They reformed in 2012, and they are currently still Woo! going. Okay, Adele well, Lynch, Kiwi Lynch, Lindsay Armow, and Sinead O'Carroll. Do you reckon they're Irish? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, they, de- they, they <laughs> yeah they for are. Sure they are, won yeah. like an Irish like. So um... they they have three albums: Bewitched, okay, which came out in 1998. Awake and Breathe. What was their, what was their biggest hit? Their biggest hit? Yeah. Let's have a look. Bewitched discography, um, video albums, extended solo artists, Cella V. Oh yeah, C'est la vie, that's right. I remember that. C'est la vie. And then Roller Coaster, which I don't remember. Roller Coaster. No, no, it's not them, is it? That is Baby Shark, I believe that was. Roller Coaster. That's what you were singing right there. Roller Coaster. No, it's that one there. You know, Roller Coaster. What's on, what's that from? Oh, look, I'm gonna have to look this up now because I'm so curious. Sing it, sing it uh, into Shazam. See if it picks it up. Roller Coaster. <laughs> you, you're actually not that far off. Do, do, oh my God. Do, do. How many albums then? Do we know? Three, three, three albums. Three there are. was the confirmation. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know, man. I just like I don't I don't want to listen to Bewitched though. Like, I they they're no? they're not you know they don't have like any accolades that 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 appeal to me other than um, "Say La Vie," which is familiar, but I, I just don't even know if it's a good song. Really, like it's I would say it's not personally, but <laughs> I I don't know. Like on a top fifty pop album of all time, judged by like Rolling Stone or something like that. <sighs> There's got to be better pop albums. I was just listening to Roller Coaster. It's terrible. It's what, terrible. What, by, the song is bewitched? terrible. The video is terrible. It's it's <laughs> terrible. Like there's nothing it's redeeming real, about it. It's it's absolutely. It's a real mark abysmal. of its time from 1997 or whatever. When you look at stuff from the 90s, this is what always amazes me: is when I look at videos from the it's 80s. Got very, it's got a very sort of set look. I always the think of the Spice Girls when I think of the 90s, but then there's there were so many other great bands like apart from the Spice Girls but, as well. But when the, the Spice Girls were big, if you look at the production value of their videos, it was shockingly bad. It was like absolutely shockingly bad yeah when you look at the quality of the songs i listened to whatever what was their wannabe right oh, tell me where you want me or listen yeah, to yeah. that like yesterday mrs f put it put it on to piss me off she put it on the other side <laughs> <Right. laughs> my, my go my go-to for that is uh is the fast food song by fast food rockers my kids right. love it as well every but day if, they ask if for you it, listen like, to wannabe it's like the jankiest shittest assembly of music like the production is so low quality they did it in an afternoon i fucking swear to god it's like the most simple beat there's barely any backing music the lyrics are written on a fucking napkin they're so bad they don't scan it's terrible and this was a global hit i and you think that's the 90s in a fucking nutshell, it was yeah, so There's, no, there's no poetry there. There's no talent. There's no... It was all it the 90s in a nutshell, though. There's so, so for, much for good pop shit. Music, it is. For, pop, for pop music, I would say, yeah. But didn't didn't History by Michael Jackson come out in the 90s? And that was uh, like... Pfft. One of his worst <laughs> albums. Oh, help. No, help I don't us. know if it was, though. I, was I, nothing else good in the 90s? Were there any things? Like, what were we going to look back on from 2000s? Fucking Coldplay? In, I mean, in terms Jesus. of pop in the '90s, yeah, I don't think much came out. Like, I think it was a bad time for pop. For pop in music, I think, I think it was one of the worst. It was just times. dominated by boy and girl 
girl bands right. that but if you, know, you think like, about other music that came out in the 90s there was loads of really good stuff there was well, loads Britney of really Spears good stuff came out in the no- she, but that was the very end of the no- tail end of the 90s leading into the 2000s right we'll be very defensive of britney spears we're gonna we're gonna represent our girl you know come on yeah she was, she was but you had but yeah. you had uh you had grunge in the 90s which right was but that's like the thing huge. is i'm saying that's that's not pop right so you, you the had, response you had to the how golden, shit pop arguably the golden era of hip-hop in the 90s as well most people but, but that's what i was gonna say is it like pop music suddenly stopped being they stopped having just white people in groups which is pretty much what pop music was in the 90s was just a bunch of white kids in a group i feel like r&b fused into pop a bit more in the right, 90s exactly. as well pop, pop was taken up was overtaken by hip-hop which then became more mainstream if you think about yeah, what rap used to be like yeah if you think about modern pop music it's far more related to r&b and hip-hop than it is to to the pop sound of the 80s. The 90s was like a carry-on from the 80s, but it looked super shit. And instead of just being made by musicians, which a lot of pop music was in the 80s, it was made by studios putting together the shittest beat they could and assembling a group. Yeah. Uh, that's I think but that's just, but when I think of a manufactured band, that sort of that that's what I think of. What you just True. described there. But they did also do that with Motown and, and a lot of people around that era. They, they also did, but it was it, I think it was different though, because the the quality was was much better like the Maybe, people yeah, do, yeah. The, the people doing it were responsible for like some some real belters you know what yeah. i mean oh god yeah uh, as opposed to like some of the shit that's come out from the 90s onwards oh my god it's so bad yeah yeah it's so bad i don't know it's I, i'm sure that people who are more into this have like a, a better opinion on all this or whatever but i i just find it interesting it's something i've been doing recently yeah and i mean um, look do you remember and I, i've been loving it do you remember wickfield saturday night saturday night pretty baby I, I want you guys, we, we remember the tune, but I want yeah. you to go back to some of these 90s so-called classics, and I want you to actually listen to the quality of the song making like and the songwriting. Like What is Love and um, Rhythm of the Night, and I've Got the Power. But those um, were all dance classics, yeah, so yeah. it was different. I mean, I'm talking about music that was pop music, has a person singing, it's meant to be a song, but there's no redeemable quality to it whatsoever. It's just an earworm. You just recognize the tune, and for some people, that's enough. Yeah. They just want to say, oh, I know this one, and the lyrics are easy to remember. But that doesn't yeah, yeah. make it a good song. But that's what yeah. I'm saying is, is it good? No, well, I guess like, the, I guess- And if not, why not? I, I, but I guess the chart, can the charts even be trusted too, though? Because if, it, if music is coming out at a time where most of the music coming out is bad, um, like there's like a lull or whatever, and something makes it to number one, is it really number one? You know what I mean? I mean like, do we want to have number meatloaf? one in relation to to the well, time? But like, fuck, does it really stand up over time? After a while, like, That's what you I'm know, saying. Then I would do anything for then love. I would eat anything <laughs> for lunch. That was number one but for like ten fucking that. years, right? Is yeah. that going? Oh fuck! And that that mu- the creepy fucking music video where it was like Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Like for, oh. oh fuck me! It wasn't Cher in it as well or something. Like, didn't Cher have something to do with that song? No, it point? wasn't Cher. I can't remember the lady that was in it, but it wasn't Cher. So because it was from a movie, right? It was a song from a movie. It was the song from the fucking Beauty and the Beast oh, movie. You pick me up I'm sure of it. Put me down. It doesn't even sound like a woman singing. It sounds like the guy from South Park singing in like in a fake woman's voice you know what i mean so get this in the in the in the the notes for the album you know the woman that sings she was Uh only credited as mrs loud in the album notes (laughs) what What? yeah she was later identified as lorraine crosby however she does not appear in the video and her vocals are lip-synced by dana patrick isn't that weird what the fuck yeah that is pretty weird yeah yeah, I don't know, man. Meatloaf. Again, Meatloaf gets sort of like bounced around as like, you know, oh, it's classic Meatloaf albums and stuff. But like, I, I never like listen to him. And I, and my my recollections of him are that I would do anything for love, which annoys me. So like. But you won't do that. But I won't do that. So like, I feel the same way to, about Meatloaf. Like, I would do anything, listen to a new album, but I won't listen to won't Meatloaf. Won't listen to Meatloaf. <laughs> no, Fair no. enough. Yeah, no, I, I will probably end up listening to Meatloaf in my journey at some point. But much like Pink Floyd, I'm not ready. I, everybody bangs on about Dark Side of the Moon being like this classic fucking album, essential rock album that everybody has to have listened to. But 
my my idea of Pink Floyd is that they're just so fucking boring. I can't bring myself to do it. But I know nothing about them. I've never really listened to any of their music. If so. you listen to Comfortably Numb, that's a that is a a really good track. I mean, the the guitar solo in that is is legendary, absolutely legendary. Um, I, I agree. There, one of the, like a lot of those old bands, especially from that. It's era. like stoner rock, right? Seventies music no, 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 was, no, no. you know, like Deep Purple are are boring to me as well. I tried listening to one of their albums, and it's just like that muscle car stoner rock that I just yeah, I, I can't, I can't get into. I, I mean, don't I, like I it think, that much. I think it's a little bit more psychedelic than. than yeah. I mean, you know, people did a lot of drugs when they went to see a lot sure. of these bands, and sure. I think that was obviously like. Like I think of the Grateful Dead when I think of like stoner rock. Really, yes, but, yeah, God, the Grateful. But yeah, Dead, you're, you're you're right. That that was a lot of that era. That I think the reason that it's held up as these amazing classics is partly because the journalists writing about it are all middle aged and up, yeah. uh, people who grew up in that era. That was obviously big for them. But yeah. Again, is the is it going on the shuttle? Are we going to put the Grateful Dead on there? Uh, Are we going fuck to fuck yeah! But find me somebody who's writing like uh, like positively about Bewitched. Like, like does does that happen? Like, I bet there's still I would a love to fan see. Page. I'd love to see a review on like a on like a Bewitched album. Like, just just to see what there's people have to say. There's a fan page on Facebook. The Witch right. fan page. Oh, that's for the TV show. Oh, okay. be, oh of course, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. It's man. pretty. I mean, that, so I, I think we can agree that the, the, there seems to be something that we can point to and say this isn't going on the shuttle. We can't really explain why. Yes, it was very popular, but it uh, sucks. Like looking yeah. back now, it sucks. So it has to be a measure of standing the test of time. Really. That's it. Yeah, I think some stuff needs to be like like I feel like uh, like like Nirvana. I'm a fan of Nirvana, so like I'll always have a bias. But I was I, when I, I was a teenager, but I'm not. I'm not now. But no, but like I feel like their stuff is pr- it has stood up to like to, to to time. Like it still sounds great now. Like uh, I, I to, it, to me anyway. But I don't know. Like maybe 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 it has aged a little bit. But I find a lot of pop music, especially like your Britney Spears, like Bewitched and stuff like that. Fuck me and Spice Girls especially. Holy crap, it's so cringe to listen to now. Like at the time when it was on the radio all the time, you're like, oh, whatever, this is like the new thing or whatever. But when you listen to it like 20 years on, it's like, holy fuck, I can't believe. Right, but were, like, were we ever the target audience? This is the this is the problem that no, we've no, got we to, never to tackle. Were, I suppose, yeah. Right, so I guarantee you, you will find a lot of people out there who will say, I still listen to that stuff and I love it because that was what I liked when I was younger. So when uh, we're saying... That people like to listen to the stuff they liked when they were teenagers. That was obviously what they liked. So yeah. in 40 years' time, are they still going to be listening to that stuff? Or will that even stand the time, test of time with people who liked it? That's I watched the, that that's documentary on uh, on Bros, you know, like the Bros. remember yeah, Bros. Bros. <laughs> Bros. Um, Bros. 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 And um it was funny because they did like the reunion thing and um and all of their fans who were 13 year old girls in the 80s were are now like you know mid 30s housewives and stuff and like there was no there were no young people there whatsoever no, it no was they were all, gonna be in their 40s yeah yeah women. it was yeah, all yeah. like like middle-aged women uh, but i i, I don't know like back, part of me thinks okay so, th- so this is a thing right obviously bewitched has got back together i'm just reading their wikipedia page and they're tour- they're touring around australia with some of these other bands from the age like atomic kitten and liberty x and five and right. stuff these guys who are getting back together and obviously one or more of them, like the, the famous one, has, has gone on and left, but the rest of them have kind of stuck together and kept the band together and, and sure. done it for like 10 years or more now. And I mean, part of me thinks, like, is that wholesome? Or part of me also thinks, is it just, are they just sort of scraping by? You know, is it like. Oh, they're scraping. You know, are they like Make a sort no of, mistake, they yeah. are scraping by. But if you've been on stage and you've had three or four years of being on TV and being famous, what are you going to go work in an insurance company? You know what I mean? It's tough. People cling to fame. I guess for so, obvious yeah. reasons. And this is like the Yogs cast. I'm doing that yeah, right now. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's this this whole thing is actually secretly about the Yogs cast. Obviously. <laughs> This whole podcast. I don't want to go back to working at an insurance company. That's why I'm like clinging on as much as I can here. Like, geez. I mean, I don't know what I, I think about this a lot is like, I mean, I'm not getting much Dota work anymore. Like if, if any, really, like there's all these tournaments going on. I never hear a peep. Yeah. No one's asking me, hey, do you want to come out here? And I have to Man, turn I'm down. Say, you know what? I'm not even I, turning I, down work anymore. Like I I'm not getting off it. I think I, well, we're suffering from, uh, you know, uh, ageism. I think that's what's happening because we're older guys. I it. never get invited to Twitch Rivals <laughs> or anything either. Like, you know, I'm fucking trying. <laughs> I'm, I'm slugging it out every day. I'm, I'm 
every day I'm on Twitch streaming every day and they never invite me to anything. Like they're just inviting all the young bucks with blue hair to everything. It's Fucking like blue well, head fucks. I'm losing my, so I could have strands of blue hair, I suppose. But like, I mean, come on, like you got to give the older guys a chance too, like equal opportunities I and all that. I could paint my head blue and look like a fucking gobstopper. With yeah, you, you could look like a, <laughs> like an Everton super fan or something. You just like paint yourself it's just not, yeah. blue and scream. Just go the whole fucking thing like a like a blue Bloomin group. I would whatever. like to or, say this to people yeah, at Twitch. And Smurf yeah, I could up. just go Papa Smurf. But I mean, if you're an advertiser, why the fuck are you trying to advertise to thirteen and fourteen year old kids? They ain't got no money. Jaguar, yeah, that's it. Sponsor yeah. me. I get older viewers sometimes. Some people Fuck with me, jobs my and money. Is filled with people with lots of extra money. Yeah, Christ. I'm talking parents. I'm talking people that have jobs. Yeah. I don't have fucking little kids watching me like Ninja and all the rest of these guys. Advertisers, no. come at me. I yeah, am your target demo. I have money. I am a middle aged man. My, my, I, I appeal to the model train set in the garage demographic. Those exactly. guys have money. These are the Get guys who there. bought all of the Flight Simulator X DLC. Exactly. They're in my chat. There ain't no 12 year old buying $1,000 worth of DLC. But that's because we're Hit the me. old fucking people who play these train sets. I mean, I don't have a train set, but I have a digital train set. I, I worry that I am becoming like my my friend's dads when i was a kid you know yeah, one of them had a sort of train set the other one my one of my friend's dads was was um he worked at a gambling firm like um i think like ladbrooks or something like quite high up and um was really into to maths mathematics and he he just did it kind of as a hobby and he was like always there reading like maths books and and you know i talked to him about it because i did maths a level and stuff and i was quite I'd done done a bit of stuff, and he he sort of because he, he I don't think he'd really done a lot of maths at at school, um, and so he was sort of doing the same stuff as 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 I was, and so we were kind of it was I don't know I just I thought it was nice, and but at the same time, uh, so this week okay I've been watching loads of YouTube videos about right. um, maths <laughs> for some oh, reason. Oh, did, did you watch Number File yet? Like I think I've I been watching Number yeah, File. Yeah, they're really good. They're really good. Even um, if you don't like maths, they make maths seem really interesting. Uh, another and really good, um, another good series. Uh, if you're interested in numbers and maths, to watch, uh, look it up on YouTube. It's called The Number Jacks. You might like that one too. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's not a, that's not a little reference, Lewis will get. I get I think. <laughs> no, no. Shout this, out to the what, parents out there. This is what makes it funny, though. He's going to look it up and he's going to come back next week. The like, number jacks are on their way. The number the jacks, number jacks are, are on their way. way. <laughs> number uh, checker, number checker. Can you take a number pick? <laughs> the number blocks as well. Number blocks is a good one too. Oh my a god! New one flex. Um, so by the way, god. this is some. I'm sure, and I this is a this is a Triforce classic statement coming out. I'm sure right. we've mentioned this before. Right. You know the number taker. Yeah. He is the king of the White Walkers in Game of Thrones. Same actor. Holy shit! I don't know. And what his you're real about. name what? is Jimmy Savile. That can't be right. No, that can't be right. No, no, he he is that guy, but he he actually is that guy. Jimmy Savile's dead, man. The different guy. And his name is Jimmy Savile. And That's he, right. He is the white. And Walker. he hasn't changed Ro it. His name is actually Ross Mullen. I don't know why he's listed as Jimmy Savile on the. Oh, I think someone's edited the page as a joke. His name is Ross Mullen. Oh my god, we're gonna have to cut this. We're gonna have to cut this. Why? <laughs> Because That's funny. it's like we can't just call out some guy as being called this. What, we're calling him out because he has a name. We haven't accused of anything. Wait, what page? What page has the white one? The Google Lord of the White Walkers talker. has right. Jimmy Savile. No, no, no. That, on IMDb, he's listed as Ross Mullen, originally right. from Montreal in Canada, and he was in. Right. He was the number taker, and he was also the White Walker in Game of Thrones. Okay. Right. So if you look at. The number take, if you Google number taker, it says the number taker, number jacks wiki. And you go to that and it lists the actor's name as Jimmy Savile. Wow. <laughs> so obviously someone's edited it because he's fucking creepy. But yeah, bizarre. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Oh my god. Sorry. So I've been looking, watching maths videos. Yeah. On, so that's on, the mundane you're not thing you've been doing. Any this of week. that, Lewis? You're not cutting any of that. Nah, shit. he that can't. There's gold. no. There's there's Triforce nowhere. Gold. There's nowhere for him to cut just it. I just didn't want to offend. How's it Ross, offending Ross him to Mullen. say he has a name? Well, but no, but because of balls, Lewis. What a mess. What a mess. Um, Jesus, I've I give up. All right. Yeah. You'll go. No, you what? So you've been watching videos on math, okay? What have you been doing? Flat. This has taken forty minutes for us to get through what we've been doing this week. After I I 
occupied 30 minutes of time talking about music. I'm sorry. I've been reading comics this week. I went to right. the comic shop. I, I bought um because uh, two things. First of all, I'm gonna start doing a D D game on stream because I thought, fuck it, I'd like to do that. I've got viewers sure. who want to play. So I was like, cool. So I went and bought a lot of DD stuff and dug out all my old books and everything, got some PDFs and things from that you can get online for free. And not illegally, by the way. And then I bought some comics and I bought Dead Orbit, Aliens Dead Orbit, which is like an alien spin-off by a gay called, guy called James Stoko, and it's mediocre at best. Um, and then I got. Did you not check any reviews before you bought these or anything? No, just like you watch a movie and then you go, yeah, it was all right. You know, I'm not going to. I mean, yeah, it, it's 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 reasonably well received in, in comic circles. It's got a lot okay. of good reviews, but it's not great. And then I got Mr. Miracle, which is a DC comic. Um, a guy called Tom King wrote this. The artwork is beautiful, really, really good. The story is very confusing, but very good. I'm not a big DC guy. So a lot of the references and the things, I'm not sure if it's unique to this comic or if it's general stuff from the 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 uh, from the, the universe. And apparently a lot of it's general stuff from the universe. So I didn't know who a lot of people were. It's kind of weird, but it's it is a very interesting comic, and I really liked it. And it's it does something really original. I've never seen in a comic. It actually manages to have two people who are basically gods who live in LA raising a young child that they they have and also fighting Satan, essentially, um, which is bonkers. But they managed to combine that war between the gods uh, with them actually raising a kid, and it's completely believable. The, the parenting and everything. I was like, shit, I can relate to like half of this stuff. It was really funny. So that was that was worth the read. And then I got okay. a collection of Punisher comics, the complete collection, volume two, because I got volume one, which is just a whole bunch of the Punisher, because I love the Punisher. And then I got one called Sabrina, which is the teenage uh, witch. It is not. It's actually unrelated to the teenage witch. This was extremely well reviewed. It's by a guy called Nick Donasso. It's in hardback. I don't know if it's in softback. It's excellent. Absolutely excellent. Okay. I recommend it. So those are my comic recommendations. Du jour. Right. Holy fuck, we're so cultured on this podcast. Have you read Squirrel Girl? Squirrel Still haven't Girl. read Squirrel Girl. I thought Squirrel Girl was kind of a, a joke, but she's meant to be like this unbelievably powerful superhero. And I just thought it was kind of a gimmick, so I never bothered dipping into it. Oh. Like, I was worried. I was worried at the end of the Avengers that the Avengers Endgame was going to fucking have Squirrel Girl turn up and save the world. And I'd be like, I'm done. Like, I tried. You know, I love this series, but you can't just have Squirrel Girl. It's too stupid. It's, it's, she's ridiculously powerful. It's I think you have to say it with, like, an American accent as well, so it rhymes. Squirrel I think it's Girl. Like Squirrel Girl. Anyway, Squirrel girl. well, this is interesting because I'm preparing to go away to GDC to right. San Francisco. Oh. And last year I went, um, I got some comics on my iPad and I was reading one of them on the on the flight. And I was reading, I probably already said this on the podcast maybe as well, but probably, yeah. I was reading um, Neo, Neo, Neocom Nikon, the, the Alan Moore Necrocom, Necrocom Nikon thingy. Right. I think it's called that. Um, anyway, it's incredibly, I didn't realize how, quite how graphically explicit it was <laughs> it's like very adult like, oh yeah i think i like, was on your flight i walked over and i saw that you were basically looking at porn on your ipad <laughs> well there was this moment and I had where to like say to you come on lewis time and place uh, i didn't want to be that guy who's like on a flight and everyone could see what they're watching and it's like looks really dodgy so i always had that with times. game of thrones i was sitting next to somebody and i was watching like season one of game of thrones on my ipad Season one was was especially racy. Remember, like when when it first came out, they wanted to make it like very sexual to like appeal to more people because they weren't sure if it was going to be well received or whatever. Like at least that's what I was told. Um, so there's there's a lot more sex scenes in season one and two of, of Game of Thrones. It is a lot like watching it with your parents. Yes, in the room, yeah, you know it was I mean? like that. I was like sitting next to some dude on a plane, and there's like fucking, you know, um, what's his face? Jamie is just like. Given Cersei Chowing down in the, on Cersei's in the top mouth that, whatever. Yeah, in the top of that <laughs> tower, and it was like pretty awkward. I was like, oh shit. Oh, I Jesus. gotta keep well, watching though. I can't I can't put it down. I, I can't well, miss a thing. So Well the problem what I was finding was that I was like getting to a page that was a little bit dodgy and thinking, oh fuck shit, people are gonna see this. So I was skipping forward a page and it would get even worse. And I was like, ah so I skip forward another page and then we just be like just even, even worse, and I, you know what I mean. It was like it was like oh oh, I, it's like you know what I mean. It, oh god, it was it was good though. Um, it, although I did have to like um go back and like actually read it properly later, you know. 
because I don't know, that kind of made the experience of watching it a little bit awkward. I think on planes, they do cut out like key scenes. Um, oh, like the in, in flight entertainment. Edwin was talking thing, to me yeah. about how he went and saw Deadpool 2 in China. And there's just whole scenes that have been cut out. Yeah. And Deadpool just is there instead saying, hey, guys, um, so this scene had to get cut out. But uh, we're just going to tell you what happened. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, it's actually they've almost like made the jokey recut of it to like for the Chinese audience. Wow, and that's so and weird. It's also weird, the scenes that got cut out. Like, I think the scenes that got cut out were the ones where he had like the baby legs and stuff, you know, like yeah. some that's stuff weird, that you don't <laughs> think. That is pretty fucking weird. Yeah, it's pretty weird. But in a sense, like it's not. It doesn't fit into a kind of normal, like whether it's ex- it's not nipple, it's not like vile, it's not blood, it's not like swearing. Yeah, but these know, are it's, like it's these are of... Western things, though. In like Eastern Eastern things are a bit different. Remember, like Wow, they had to they had to redo a bunch of of Wow before they could release it in China because there was the thing about like dragon skeletons or something. They weren't allowed to. You're have not allowed them in to a show game. bones, are you? Like or skeletons something like that. Stuff. Yeah. So it's I mean, just Do- different. Do is a prime example. There's a bunch of heroes that they had to reskin for China because you just can't show anything to do with death or blood or any anything like that. It's all like completely taboo. But like when I was in Bali, we were watching a movie on TV and any shots of a, of people kissing or coming close to kissing were cut. And they weren't cut cleanly. It was like somebody just snipped and then just taped. So you're watching a scene and people lean in and then it cuts to them leaning back away from each other and saying, Phew. <laughs> so it was like nice. the kiss ne- magically never happened. But sometimes there's dialogue and it's just cut. So there'll be the... Well, that's what we've got to do. And the movie just carries on. And it's that's like... That's really what? weird, yeah. But hold on, because we needed to know there was dialogue there, <laughs> you know. But yeah, they just cut it. So that, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of weird edits that go on. Because we make movies for the West, and you know when you go but, out, you got different cultures and shit, and they're like, can't. Have I that. think a lot of Western movies are made so you can doze off they for five minutes, wake up, and still like be following it. Oh, like, that's true. You don't have to, none of these movies or even TV shows or anything really. You can just just skip a lot of it, and you'll get the idea. Like, so this guy's the, so you know, like you sit down with one of your friends, and you're like on episode six of it. And, you know, halfway through, they're like, oh, so this guy's this guy and this guy does this. And they're like, yeah, like, yeah that's all you need to yeah. know. It's like, job done. I mean, it's like they have those scenes in movies where they're going to do something and the guys say, wait a minute. So you're telling me and we'll recap what they have to do as if they weren't all there. I mean, when have you ever done that? Like, you've never said we need to go do something and halfway there, someone stopped you and said, hold on a minute. So you're telling me we're going to go get lunch at this place and we're going to walk there this way? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> okay. He's like, no, it doesn't happen. No one recaps like that. <laughs> oh, fuck. Maybe we should do more. Wait a minute. So you're telling me we're recording a podcast right now? Yes. Oh, my God. Well, it definitely helps if you brought your nan with you or something, you That's know, and she true, needs yeah. a little recap. On yeah. Like, 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 yeah. What's going That's on? how you make movies. You pretend you're going yeah. out with your grand. Where are we going the dead? We're going to the movies, grand. What are we going to see? We're going to see a <laughs> porno, grand. We're going to the adult theater. <laughs> you guys ever see that Seinfeld routine where he's like, where he's saying that like he's the guy at the at the movie theater who doesn't really pay attention and he just spends the whole movie like talking to whoever he's with about so. Did that guy die? <laughs> I like that guy. Is he dead? What happened to him? <laughs> like, like the whole movie. Oh fuck, I loved it. It was really funny. Hey, speaking of speaking of uh, movies, documentaries, I watched that free solo yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. The uh, documentary about the dude that climbs mountains without yeah, any Yeah, I think I, I watched like a I think I watched like a 10 minute YouTube like making of yeah. the movie yeah. instead of watching the movie. I don't know why. It was it was, it was all right. It was pretty good. Like it was, it, it was interesting, but I don't know. I still don't get why people bother doing it. Like why, why climb a mountain? Like, fuck me. It just seems I like. I mean, I understand why they do it, but, but why do it with, with no safety thing? I mean, what, I guess like, do you really need that to live? Like, I guess like, thing is like, if for me, like they always talk about how addictive it is and they're adre- addicted to the adrenaline and ad- adrenaline junkies and they do these things to risk their lives. And I'm like, well, you know, if you go through this fucking f- climb, this entire mountain, like without any protection on afterwards and you've done it, like. How do you top that? You know, how do you like move on to the next bit of your life? And you don't just yeah. settle down and get like a fucking job in Starbucks after doing that, do you? But it's you know, kind of nuts. Yeah. How do you get your rocks off? It feels like it feels like unnecessary level of of I don't know. It's not 
like perverted in some way. It's like me journey. when I like for when I first started masturbating, it was just like just just normally, you know, like just just rubbed up my pensy big time and had a had a fun time or whatever. But I found over the years, like I needed to like change it up more and more. And now I have to like strangle myself and put a lemon in my watch mouth. Some on a, incest I have to watch stuff. cartoon porn and stuff. Like uh, it's and crazy. also like neo yeah like comic so I think stuff. I, on know, that like, level, I get it. But no, like in the uh, in the documentary, they did like an MRI scan of him. They were they were analyzing, trying to analyze his brain just to see like you know if they could find something wrong that explained why he felt compelled to do this or whatever. And there's like some part of his brain that just normal people um, will have it like activate under like a normal amount of like, you know, stimulus or whatever. But his just didn't like for whatever reason, like he had to go to like extremes to get this like part of his brain to actually start functioning or something like that. And um, and I think he had like Asperger's and, and stuff like that, too, which I don't know if it's related in any way or whatever, but it was it was interesting anyway. It's it, it's really well done. I mean, it's impressive and stuff, but I'm still always just left wondering, like, uh, like, I, I just don't get it. I, I just don't I, don't I don't get mountain climbing. I don't understand the appeal. Like and I've never done it before and I, I have no desire to do it either. So, like. I, f- I felt like part of it was a bit wasted on me, but I I, I feel like um, it was interesting. The film crew inputting into these people's lives sometimes can be very uh, pressurizing and cause problems in a sense. Like you know, as soon as you you shine the camera on someone, they start behaving uh, like kind of extravagantly or exaggerated. So you think oh, there's you know, almost was... like a quantum effect where there's an uncertainty there, and then when you look at the particle. Its position becomes solidified. It's like right. yeah, it's like a math problem. Um, it's like a Heisenberg. No, so I think what I you, think there what, was a number you, jacks episode about that. Actually, I guess what I'm trying to say is that people tend to show off or be a bit more foolhardy or reckless when they're on camera, and I wonder to what effect, like film crews are aware that they might be putting the targets of their film movies at, at risk. I sort of, I didn't really, when I watched a documentary about this sort of free solo, I was like, to what extent does this guy, you know, obviously he knows he's being filmed. Like he knows that the whole thing's happening. Like, but, but, you know, it's, does that mean that, that like he like, you know, maybe he was thinking, okay, I'm not ready to do it, but I'm, I'm under the pressure. I'm being filmed. I've got to do it. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe is that, positive is that negative like what if something had happened would it have happened because they were filming would they be responsible if he'd fallen off you well know, that's like- it you basically just they're, they're sitting there almost waiting to watch a guy die is what some of them felt like and some of them couldn't even look in the cameras like while they were doing it because they're like he'd get to certain parts of the mountain and they'd just be like fuck I, like god i've got to watch he has this. no safety equipment whatsoever he's What's he, it called uh, we're, we're about to watch a guy die uh, it's called free solo because I, I watched a documentary called losers which is quite good if you want to check that okay. out it's about people Are who you are, in it hey <laughs> fuck you <laughs> It's, it's, it's no, but on a related people. note, it's about me. So um. that was such a cheap shot. That was like the cheapest fucking losers. <laughs> eh? We mean you. Are you twelve? <laughs> a grown man over here. Relax. Yeah, I'm relax. only fucking it's hitting you. That's fucking rich. Bro. That's fucking rich oh coming from God. from the guy who just read like twenty comic books as well. Like I'm just <laughs> putting it out there. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. Fuck you. Oh, Find your own on. fucking stupid shows. Fuck you. And you can oh. keep listening to the Beatles and think you're listening to new music, you old bitch. So, so it's a sports oh. thing. It's a sports, it's a sports thing, right? I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about, Liz. Carry on. I'm going to flame the shit out of you next time you talk about anything. Go on. Tell us a story. Are you, you idiot? idiot? Oh, man. Relax. <laughs> oh. I just think it's interesting. I'm just what, trying to tell you something. So- Okay, so hang on. Let's let's backtrack a bit. What was the documentary called? Losers. <laughs> Confirm? <laughs> Deny? <laughs> no. Yes. yes. I think Preflex is actually upset. Sorry, I didn't mean I didn't mean to offend you. I'm just fucking with you. It's 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 just a show about <laughs> it's a show about people who've failed in some way and then turn it into a success. That's it. Right. It's good. It's inspiring for all of you out there who have assholes like Lewis up your, up your dick all day. 
Uh, I'm running you down. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Big facts. Don't worry. We'll get you some work, man. That was such a cheap shot to it fuck was. me. It's so cheap. <laughs> It's not the sometimes first time. The, That's why I'm angry. It's not the first time. Sometimes it's the cheapest ones that trigger you. Trigger I gotta you the take hardest them when well, I can get them. God damn! Oh, come on. This podcast's over. Oh. We're not doing one next week. That's it. No, well, we're not. We're not anyway because Lewis is going away. So I know um, that was the joke. So we could have not done one next week, oh, and then we would shit. have said it's because Tip Perry's falling out with it. Lewis. Oh. And then we could have like Don't reconciliation worry. episode, but it's all right. I think we'll be all right. But interestingly, if people do want more Triforce next week, it's possible that our um, main channel challenge will be out. So me and Sips and PFLAX did a main channel uh, Oh challenge. shit, is that coming out next week? I think it will come oh out pretty God. soon, yeah. Oh and my so, God. I've been, waiting, I've been waiting for that because I want to see what it looks like. Like I'm yeah, actually I want to see hard. what it looks like too, yeah. Um, we did, it wasn't a sponsored thing. No, it was um, but so we wanted to, weird, but really it was fun. so fucking weird, but that was, that was a blast. It was super yeah. fun, yeah. We got some money from people, say, paying YouTube memberships and I wanted to put it back into doing like a live action thing because I really enjoy doing them and so... That's what it's sponsored by. It's actually funded by members memberships on YouTube, which is interesting. So thing. make sure you so mash that people, membership button on yeah, YouTube. You, and yeah, you can do. Or you can the support the Trifles podcast on patreon.com slash Trifles Slam podcast. down a Patreon on us Perry or something. Would certainly um, appreciate it. Maybe this week's and not the best week to pledge your Patreon, though, because there's not going to be a podcast next week. Mm. So you don't want to be in the situation where you're like, support this week. And then you're like, oh, fuck, these guys didn't even release well, one. We haven't got it on like a per podcast anyway so it's like oh, a, right. sort of a month oh i did you know in other minor news i did get i did get caught speeding twice and i now have six points on my license holy what? shit yeah wow so holy be, shit. be responsible the same camera? Yeah, no one on the way down to fucking bristol to record that shit with you guys that was three points and um, i was i was nine miles over the speed limit and once going down to see my mum, i was seven miles out uh, miles an hour oh in my the speed God. Limit. God. so yeah I think within the space of like two weeks i got caught twice never never had any trouble before but both times coming off the motorway hit a, a zone that's surprisingly oh shit this is 40 you start to slow down we should have talked about this enough. it's really stressful when you get that fucking citation from the police as well isn't it because it like, it's super really serious like, the, the, the fucking language they use it's like being sent to the it's like being back at school and being like told it's really off. interesting as well that like they're so on top of stuff like that that brings in like ticket money or whatever and then knife crime is just out of control really interesting <laughs> It well, anyway, really that's all we got time for. Buy the jug. Well, you don't have to. If you if you're no, a big, you if you're a big Patreon fan, or we'll get hundred bucks. Uh, if you subscribe for one month on that, that'll get you a jug, and I'll get them shipped off pretty soon. You can be the jugger them. or the juggy. Yes, you choose. Yeah, you can do the jugging, or you could be the recipient of a jug. Um, yeah, maybe don't use boiling boiling water Makes though. A like great wedding thank gift. you to all of our. Patreon supporters, it's yeah. been amazing. Um, we love and you. And if you are, if you do get a jug and you do decide to jug someone, make sure you um, make sure you you video it and send it to us on Twitter. Oh but God. don't use boiling water. Don't use yeah, don't use don't anything use that's gonna anything harm painful. or or kill somebody. Okay, but just like as jug a joke, you, jug your jug your mum. You when can she's use sunbathing. really freezing cold water though. That would be yeah. funny. Ice your dad. <laughs> yeah, ice them up hard. Or a friend. Ice your dad for me. Yeah. Sure. Well, there you go. That's, that's our podcast. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thanks very um, much. See you all next, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, yes. so I'm going to be waiting. Soon. Soon. He's back, I'll have yeah. lots of stories when I come back. Oh, I'm yeah, sure that's about, true. That's true. All right, cool. Homeless people. Perfect. Okay. Trying to strangle me. All right. Yes. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye.